it's PrisleyGetActiveGames.com here, and today is Science Sunday, and we are going to be opening the Spangler Science Club monthly science box, and I'm really excited to see what's in it. So we opened the kit and played around with it a little bit, and it's really, really cool. It has to deal with polymers again, so it's kind of like the goo one that we did. There'll be a link to that in the description, except this time the polymers behave a little bit differently. So let's start with our first experiment. So let's we're going to put a third of this clear worm goo into the small cup. So, we're, well, we're not going to put a third of this. We're going to put a third into here. So... And that looks, seems good to me. And um, then we are going to put two thirds uh, of water into this big cup. It's going down a little bit. Yeah, it's building a little bit. So we're going to put a scoop of this worm activator, which is calcium, into our water. And stir it with our little stirring stick. And the clear worm goo, by the way, is sodium alginate. And stir this. Until everything is pretty much almost dissolved. This does not take long. Okay, there we go. And now we're going to take our syringe. And we're going to fill it up. And we're going to fill it up up to five with our... Oops. We're going to fill it up to five with our worm substance here okay okay so this kind of looks like there's nothing happening looks kind of like it's dissolving in there and there's really nothing at all happening but watch what happens when I put my finger in here I made a worm these worms are really fun to make and I have wow it's, and they're actually really squishy because um, when the sodium alginate touches the calcium, which is the worm activator, and then the sodium alginate hardens when it touches the calcium infused water, and it becomes a worm. But there's still liquid inside of the worm. So if I break off a little bit, don't worry, I can fix it just by putting it in more of the calcium water. You'll see there's a liquid inside of it. When I plop it back in, the edge seals up. And these are really fun just to mess around with, like breaking them. I've actually fused a couple together just by taking two worms and then dipping one of the ends of the worms into the sodium alginate and fusing them together. And they're just a lot of fun just to mess around with. And you can also dye them um, with fizzers. Here are some of the fizzers. We have a lot of fizzers. So if you subscribe to the kit, you're going to get a lot of fizzers, and it's going to be amazing because you can make all sorts of colored things. But you can color these, you can make rainbow versions of these, and one of my personal favorites is you can make a color changing one. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so to make our color changing worms, we're going to do pretty much the exact same thing, except instead we're going to be using this thermochromic dye infused sodium alginate, which sounds really confusing to people who don't know what it is. What thermochromic dye is, is it's a dye that, depending on the heat, folds over and changes the way it reflects light. And all color is, is the way something reflects light. So it will change color when it gets hotter and it shifts differently, reflecting a different way of light, and that it makes it change color. So thermo means heat, and chromic means color changing, so that's why it's called thermochromic dye. So let's go ahead and get this started. So in goes our thermochromic dye infused sodium alginate. Um, I'm probably not the only person that really likes using terms like that. And then we're just going to take our syringe. This syringe has blue in it. So don't use the same syringe. This is a syringe we used for the other one. Um, this is the syringe that we're using for this one. Okay. Let me just make sure I don't have anything in here. I don't want air. And Okay, I think we're good. Okay, we're good. Here. So now you can actually see how the worm kind of forms since this is colored. Let me just wipe off the tip so I don't get this weird, another blob. 
that's actually an experiment in here. You can make little um, warm eggs. See? Soon as it touches the water, the outside hardens, but the inside is still a little liquid. So here's our little worm. I think I accidentally created multiple. Yeah, I created multiples here because of um, I wasn't pouring super well. But here it is. So now let's put it in some different temperature waters and see how it changes color. So as you can see, it's still this blue color. So let me put it in the hot water and watch what happens. <laughs> it goes into being this bluey clear worm. And now let's put this worm in the cold water. And it goes back to being blue very quickly. I don't want to put my hands in there. It's so cold. So um, one of my favorite things to do is I just like kind of, kind of like tie dye them kind of with different colors. You just switch them back and forth. And occasionally you can get these really nice looking gradients from the white to the blue. So it, these are really fun to play with just to see how well you can match the colors and see. So let's talk a little bit about how this all works. So a normal liquid would look something like this. So each one of these little orange beads is a molecule. So I can run my hand through it really easily. It would pour really easily if I picked it up. If I poured it. And everything is just not stuck together. And this is a lot like water. So the sodium alginate looks something like this. All of the individual molecules have come together to form little chains. So if I try and rake my hand through it, it's not gonna be as easy. And it doesn't pour as easily as a normal liquid would, like water. So this is more syrupy and like the sodium alginate. So once the sodium alginate touches the calcium, it does what's called cross-linking. And all the individual little polymers come together to form a chain like this. So everything that the calcium doesn't touch stays syrupy and gooey like the sodium alginate, but everything that it does touch becomes cross-linked together and harder like the outside of the worm. But on the inside of the worms, the calcium hasn't touched it, so it's still gooey like the sodium alginate and syrupy. Another really cool thing that the Spangler Science kits do is they really encourage you to experiment and not just do what the instructions say. So I was wondering what would happen if I poured some of this calcium stuff into the sodium alginate instead of pouring the sodium alginate into the calcium. So we did this earlier and it was a really, really, really cool result. So let's go ahead and do it now so I can show you what it does. So we're gonna pour this calcium water into this little alginate thing. And as you can see, what happens here is it makes this little gooey bag. And so, like the worms, the outside is touched by the calcium and it becomes cross-linked together, but the inside is still really, really gooey, like normal. So I'm gonna pour this in here, whoop. And we'll tear it apart so you can see the little gooey. <laughs> and this reminds me of the edible water bottle things, and I wonder if they use something similar. So, as always, this is a really, really cool Spangler Science Club kit. I always love getting these in the mail because I get to play around with all of the little experiments. And like I said, you can make rainbow worms, you can make dyed worms, and all sorts of really, really cool things like that. So, it's super duper amazing. If you've subscribed to the kit, tell me what you think about this month's kit in the comments and if you haven't already please do it's really amazing and i love just getting to play around with all the science experiments that it comes with so yeah thank you for watching and i smile